Wimbledon Common doesn't seem the likeliest place for car deals, but he was where he said he'd be. And with that sleek grey rocket ship, it began to seem like a very reasonable, straightforward deal. No questions asked, of course. All he'd said on the telephone was that he was going to make me an outstanding, not-to-be-repeated offer. A straight swap of my E-Type for an Aston Martin DB5. Also, he said, the DB5 had some accessories and special gear he thought would appeal to me. He gave me a demonstration of some of these extras, little embellishments that showed that the owner was a real car enthusiast with a taste for individual luxury. For example, that push-button rotating number plate to make the driver feel completely at home, whether in Britain, Switzerland or France. Then the extending overlanders, back and front. Not exactly for ramming other cars, but for nudging them over a bit when you're short of parking space. Just for a second, I was a bit less sure about those twin Browning machine guns that slid out of the blinker apertures. I didn't see an immediate, everyday use for them, except perhaps for giving the odd traffic warden a quick burst. But I must admit that I was straight away sold on those two very handy gadgets hidden in the rear fins. That funnel for pumping oil under the wheels of those rotten drivers who always stay right on your tail. And the shower of tin tacks on the other side for the really stubborn road hogs. There was another notion I took to, that tyre slasher on the near side rear hub to discipline drivers who sneak into a parking space just ahead of you. And there was that steel screen that rose out of the boot to protect the rear window. Bulletproof, the dealer said amusingly. I thought the radar screen disguised as a radio was rather natty, and its scanner hidden in the wing mirror. In fact, altogether I was really taken with the car. There didn't seem any need to hum and haw, so we clinched the deal on the spot and off he drove in my old E-Type, which now, frankly, seemed pretty bare and unimaginative. One thing he'd forgotten to tell me about, though, the telephone. It quite made me jump when I heard it ring. I didn't suppose for a moment the call could be for me, but whoever it was on the other end seemed to have a message intended just for me. The message was about yet another bit of equipment I'd not yet seen. That hidden drawer under the driver's seat and its contents. Something, the caller said, I'd better take care of or they'd be taking care of me. I wonder what they could be talking about. I wonder if I could get my E-Type back.